Hey folks, this is a demo of Mage. Mage is a makefile-like replacement that uses Go instead of Bash. Um, the reason for using Go instead of Bash is that um, Bash is fairly esoteric. Um, it's, it's not going to be the um, best language for people contributing to your Go project. Um, you can't leverage code in the Go community that other people have written. Um, and it doesn't work natively on Windows. Um, so I started working on this last year after last GopherCon. Um, and it basically works just like um, make. So exported functions um, in package main. If you have a build tag of mage on the file, the export functions are the targets. So um, if I make this a little bigger so you can see it. Um, if I run mage in this directory, um, it will show me the targets. Now, what mage is doing is it is reading in all the files with build tag mage. It's um, looking for the exported functions, generating a main function, compiling it and storing it off locally in your machine somewhere. Um, when I say mage, hello, hello world. Um, that is the simplest mage file that you, you, you can have. Um, we can go a bit deeper into it. So, um, It'd be nice to have some documentation um, on the command itself and each target. So if you put docs on the function or on the package, those will show up. So down here, you can see um, this is the text we have up here. Um, and what, what we do for the targets is the first sentence is the short description. If you make just H on the actual target, you get the full text. All right. So as I said, um, we only look for things that have the mage build tag. Um, but other build tags work as well. So I'm running on a Mac. Um, so we can see that there's this similar target here, and we have a target here. Mage doesn't care what the files are called, how many you have. It just looks for files in the current directory with the build, target, build target mage. And if you use other um, build tags, those work the way you would hope. So we can do a mage here, and we see that we only see the one, two. Now what we don't see is this one with the Windows build tag because I'm not running on Windows, so that won't be compiled. If I take that out and I rerun mage, bam, now it's there. Um, you'll notice that um, these names get um, camel, camel cased. Case doesn't matter, so you can do mage some target all lower and that'll still work. Um, all right, so 
one of the things that Mage does is it builds in the idea of verbosity in your logs. So um, the default log package is set not to print out. Um, by default, I can run mage <laughs> hello and nothing prints out. There's a verbose flag, and now that'll pr 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 print out. It also pr pr prints out which targets you're running. Um, this can be handy if you want to run um, multiple targets. So you want to run like hello, we'll run another one called goodbye. Hello and bye. It'll run. Hello and goodbye. And it'll tell you what it's doing. Now, you can run multiple targets that run left to right um, serially. So it makes it very easy if you want to hit a clean at the end or at the beginning to um, make sure you're in a good state. Um, as I said, the dash V turns on and off um, the default log. One of the nice things is, is that if your target returns an error, we will pr print out that error. So if I do mage errors here, um, it tells me that, that there was an error. And more than that, it also um, exits with exit code one. Uh, now, if you exit with a specific exit code, then it'll also um, exit with that code. Notably, this is different than go run. If you run go run and you call os.exit99, go run actually exits with error code 1. It's true. Try it out. Um, and then there's a helper function here. If you, if you want to um, create an error that has both a sp specific code and a message, you can do that. So um, do image both, and you can see that it exits with the code. Um, So that all does what you would hope it would do. One of the things that make does is make has dependencies that are declarative. So you can say A depends on B, etc. Um, so um, we have that in mage as well. This mg.deps. Um, mg.deps will um, call each of these um, methods that you pass to it exactly once. If any of those methods have dependencies, those will block until those dependencies um, get run. So we can run build, which depends on proto and go generate. And proto also depends on go generate. Go generate will only get run once. It'll, it'll get run first because both of these depend on it. And, and then we'll run make pro proto. And then finally, this will unlock and, and we'll build. So I can show that over here to depths. So mage build. Uh, let return. And <laughs> as you, you can see, if you make an error in your um, code when you're writing a mage, you get a very regular go error message. So you 
automatically know what's wrong. You can go fix it. Try it again. So, generate first, then you make the protos, and then you build. It's that easy. One of the things that you do a lot of times is um, run stuff, right? That's what Bash is good at. Well, Go can be good at it too. It just needs a little help. The um, default OS exec um, running of mm, commands is not the most friendly thing. So the the errors that you get back from from the standard library is like command exited with error code one. Well, thanks. Um, what you usually want is to see what the command prints out in standard error. So that's what the mage sh package does. Um, so like if you run go xx, right, go doesn't know what that is and we'll do a mage run and what what you get is the standard error from um, running the go command. You also get to see that you know it failed with exit code one. Now, when mage returns the error from running a, a command, it also exits with the same error code as the command. So mage exits with one as well. Um, if you run... Now, normally shell dot, um, run will run and not print anything out. Um, if you want to print out what um, so if I do run version here, do it again, we can make run. Um, it won't print pr 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 anything out, but if I use run v in this one, then um, it prints to standard out what this command prints to standard out. Um, so it makes it much easier. There's also a um, output so if you need to manipulate the, the text um, you can do that you can just get the text um, so what that's done is that actually returns text and then I'm printing it out, which looks the same, but you see the difference. Um, finally, uh, so mage normally needs this extra mage command, but there's actually a trick. You can use go run and not even need mage the binary. Um, now, this has some of the drawbacks of go run and then it doesn't return the right error code but other than that it, it, it does work um, so you need this this boot this bootstrap um, file and your mage file notably the bootstrap file should not be us build mage because you don't want mage compiling this um, but you can just do go run bootstrap .co and this will run mage.main which will do all the fancy stuff and it'll look at your mage file and do the right thing and you can even do, do go run bootstrap .co hello and it will 
call your target. So this is a great way to um, use Mage without having to have it built first if you um, need to bootstrap yourself. Note that this um, the, the, the bootstrap file it has a build tag of bootstrap. This is to keep it from getting built with the rest of your code. If you have code next to it, um, then this will not get, get built unless you run it specifically with go run. Um, that's, that's, that's mage. It's super useful. I use it at work. Um, go check it out. It's at github.com. Mage file mage. Um, it is also at magefile.org. Thanks.